Hello and welcome to video three of five videos for section 1.4. Going to do a few examples here, uh, some minor proofs, I guess, if you want to call it. Um, so on this first one, we want to find the limit as h approaches zero of three plus h, the quantity squared, minus nine all over h. So I'm going to let you try this one. Uh, use the idea that we had in video two. We can't plug in zero, right? We can't use a direct substitution property because that gives give us a zero in the denominator. So what do we try to do instead? Try to do our algebra. Expand this thing, see if we can do any canceling, any factoring, anything of that nature to get that h out of the bottom or maybe generate something else in the denominator that then would allow us to use direct substitution. So go ahead and hit pause, try that. When you come back, we'll work through it and we'll compare answers, see if we got the same thing. All right, welcome back. I'll go through this a little bit quickly. Uh, again, just to save you a little bit of time and hopefully you already did the work, so it's more just checking your answer. But for this top part here, if we FOIL it out, we get what? We get 9 plus 6h plus h squared and then minus 9 here all over h. So this 9 cancels with that one. So we end up with 6h plus h squared all over h. In the numerator, we can factor out an h, which gives us 6 plus h all over h. And lo and behold, that's what we want. This h cancels with that one. So this thing is really just 6 plus h. So again, using that idea before, the limit of this one is the same as the limit of this one, as long as they're equal everywhere except at this specific point, which obviously at 0, they're not going to be the same, because this one would have 0 in the denominator. This one, we don't have to worry about it. So we're just going to plug this in now. Plug in our value for a, so 6 plus 0 is 6. So the limit as h approaches 0 of this rational function is 6. So again, you can see it's a lot quicker than trying to pick values from the left, values from the right. What does it give us? But we do have to worry about that sometimes if we can't break this down. We need to figure out. What are our values from the left? What are the values from the right? Are they the same? And if so, then that's our limit. So recall, uh, this was theorem two. I don't know if I did find it as theorem two. Hopefully I did. <coughs> Which said that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to L if and only if. And I don't think I call it theorem two, but We'll call it theorem 2 now. So if and only if the limit of f of x is equal to, uh, as x approaches a from the left side, is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right side. So let's look at an example. Let's say we want to show that the limit of the absolute value of x as x approaches 0 is actually equal to 0. So recall in one of the first videos for uh, the semester, we had that the following. It was a piecewise function. Absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0. And it's equal to negative x if x is less, less than zero. So if we use this property to, to show that this limit is actually equal to zero, then we have what? We have that the limit as x approaches zero from the right side, so the little plus side, sign of absolute value of x is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 from the right side of, well, when we're talking from the right side, that means we're using our function here, x. And so therefore, we can just plug in our value 
of A, which in this case would be zero. How about from the left? So the limit as X approaches zero from the left side of absolute value of X means that we're looking for the limit as X approaches zero from the left side of negative X. So again, if we plug in our value for A, negative zero, negative zero is the same thing as zero. So that's zero. So because the both because both limits are equal to our specified value zero, whether we're coming from the left or coming from the right, we've shown that by this theorem two, the limit of the absolute value of x is equal to zero as x approaches zero. All right, so go ahead and use that same idea of trying to prove this or trying to show this by using that theorem two uh, for the following example. So prove that the limit as x approaches 0 of the absolute value of x over x does not exist. So show that it actually doesn't reach the same value, which would mean what? It basically fails this test by theorem 2. So our limit from one side does not equal the limit from the other side, and therefore it has no limit, it does not exist. So go ahead and hit pause. Try to work it through as best you can. Hopefully you can get to the end. If not, if you get stuck, come on back, and we'll work it through together. All right, welcome back. So we're gonna try to prove this using theorem two. So first, the limit as x approaches zero from the right side of the absolute value of x over x is equal to the limit as x approaches zero from the right side. Well, again, this is what our absolute value function is. So when we're greater than zero, it's just going to be x over x, <coughs> excuse me, which is the limit as x approaches zero. x over x is what? It's equal to one. So when we have a constant, no matter what we're approaching, it's always going to be this value, which is just 1. Same idea, limit as x approaches 0 from the left of this function we're trying to prove doesn't have a limit, is the limit as x approaches 0 from the left side. So if we're on the left side, that means what? That means it's equal to negative x. So this is like negative x over x. So this is what? The limit as x approaches 0 from the left. Negative x divided by x is just negative 1. And again, by the same idea, no matter what x is approaching, it's going to give us this value of negative 1. So as we approach from the right, we get close to 1. As we approach from the left, we get close to negative 1 because they are not equal. So if and only if. Well, they're not equal, therefore, this guy, the limit, as x approaches 0 of absolute value of x over x, does not exist. It's more like 1, so D does not exist. All right, so that's the end of video 3. Again, a short one, a couple different examples. Uh, come on back, and we're going to look at what's known as the greater uh, the greatest integer function.